Airbus A380 is regarded as one of the largest jet airliners and one of the first double-decker passenger aircraft ever constructed. It took its first flight from Toulouse, France on April 27, 2005, which led to a flight test program that involved five Airbus A380s. There are two versions of the A380 that are currently manufactured, with the Airbus A380 being the 550-seat passenger version and the Airbus A380F being the freighter. The total number of the A380s manufactured stand at 159 that are being operated under 16 different airlines. This aircraft is a marvel of modern engineering and the details that went into it are enough to blow you away. Sit back and relax as we dive into the history of the world's largest passenger airplane, the Airbus A380. The Airbus A380 is a wide-body airliner manufactured by Airbus to challenge the dominance of the Boeing 747. The research and development for the A380 started in 1988, while the construction project was announced during the year 1990. The initially designed airliner was named A3XX, which was presented in the year 1994. Later, on December 19, 2000, Airbus launched the 9.5 billion euros A380 program, which was then turned into the first ever prototype on January 18, 2005 in Toulouse. The A380 took its first flight on April 27, 2005, encountering severe intricacies with the airliner's electrical systems. This led to a two-year delay in the A380's official launch, while the development and rectification cost skyrocketed to a whopping 18 billion euros. Nonetheless, Airbus A380 obtained the European Aviation Safety Agency EASA, and the US Federal Aviation Administration FAA, certifications on December 12, 2006. The first ever Airbus A380 airliner was delivered to Singapore Airlines on October 15, 2007, which initiated the services on October 25. Ever since the first A380 that was delivered in 2007, the production peaked at 30 airliners per year during 2012 and 2014. However, on February 14, 2019, Airbus announced to end its production for the A380 after Emirates reduced its last orders, favouring the A350 and the A330neo. During the middle of 1988, a team of engineers for Airbus, under the leadership of Jean Roder, started working on the development of an ultra-high capacity airliner, UHCA. The goal for Airbus was to complete its range of products while also challenging the dominance of the Boeing 747. Upon working successfully throughout the research phase, Jean Roder was given the approval for further evaluations of the UHCA after the team presented a formal presentation to the President and CEO of Airbus during June 1990. This led to the start of an era, and thus, the official inauguration for the Airbus A380 took place in June 1994. Upon receiving approval from the heads, Airbus's mega-project A380 was announced at the Farnborough Air Show during the year 1990. One of the main goals, other than to challenge Boeing 747, was to manufacture an airliner that incurred 15% lower operation cost. To come up with the perfect design to ever exist, Airbus formed a team of four designers, with the help of its partners British Aerospace, Aerospatiale, Deutsche Aerospace AG and CASA. The quest was not just to develop a design that incurred lower operation costs, but to propose new technologies that would work as the foundation for future aircraft designs. The most competitive design out of them all was finalised in 1992. Comprehending the idea of something too good to be true in the making, Boeing and several companies in the Airbus consortium started a joint feasibility study for very large commercial transport VLCT, in January 1993. The alliance was formed to overcome the potential takeover by Airbus and to share the limited market that Boeing has been dominating for a very long time now. During the Asian financial crisis that lasted from 1997 to 2000, the market's outlook remained darkened. Airbus took this as an opportunity to refine its design, which could help them decrease the production and operating costs from 15 to 20% from its competitor Boeing 747. 
The refined A3XX design converged on a double-decker layout that allowed more passenger volume as compared to the traditional single-deck design. Airbus used the conventional hub-and-spoke theory to refine its design, contrary to the point-to-point -point theory that was used for the Boeing 777. This was opted after conducting a thorough extensive market analysis with almost 200-plus focus groups. Prior to its launch, the Airbus A380 had an intricate gestation, which was started as a combined study with the Boeing on a 600-seat CLVT, very large commercial transport. During the initial development phase, Airbus developed a flying wing concept for the A380, which was then abandoned for more traditional configurations, leading to the development of the current oval double-deck section. The initial cost for the development of the Airbus A380 was approximated around $8 billion, but was eventually raised to $12.2 billion due to the technical difficulties that occurred during the first official testing flight. On December 19, 2000, the administrative board for the newly restructured Airbus initiated the construction of 50 A380s that would cost approximately $10.7 billion for six launch customers. The newly constructed A380 was regarded as a breakthrough from the previous Airbus products that were progressed chronologically from A300 to A340. Finally, during early 2001, the aircraft's configurations were finalised, resulting in the manufacturing of the first A380 on January 23, 2002. By the time the first A380 aircraft was completed, the incurred development cost had outgrown to a whopping 14 billion euros. On January 10, 2006, Airbus A380 made its first flight to Medellin, Colombia. The task was to test the engine performance and capacity at high airport altitudes. Later, the airliner made its first ever arrival in Northern America on February 6, landing in Iqaluit, Nunavut, for cold weather testing. During the initial phases of the development for the Airbus A380, the estimated cost for the airliner was approximated to be 9.5 billion euros. However, it was realized in 2004 that an additional 1.5 billion euros would be required to cover up the entire manufacturing cost. This increased the cost to approximately 10.3 billion euros. The total cost that was being incurred for the manufacture of the Airbus A380 was published only till the year 2005. Later, in 2006, it was reported that Airbus provisioned another 4.9 billion euros after encountering intricacies in the aircraft's electric cabling. This was also followed by a delay of two years, causing the company to suffer from an additional cost of 18 billion euros. In 2014, the Airbus A380 was reported to have cost around 18.9 billion euros to manufacture. However, in the quest to clear the air, Airbus released a statement mentioning that the development costs were falsely reported and were originally 15 billion euros instead of 18.9 billion. To initiate the manufacturing of the Airbus A380 in the year 2000, the governments of France, Germany and the UK loaned Airbus with the refundable advances of 5.9 billion euros. However, during February 2018, Airbus had to revise its agreement with the lending governments to lower the production cost. This was done after Emirates released the statement to lower the number of A380s, favouring the A350 and A330neo. The negotiated terms with the loan-giving governments allowed Airbus to save up to 17% of the total cost that was being incurred for manufacturing the A380s, lowering the number of airliners from 8 per year to 6 per year. The majority of the structural sections for the Airbus A380 are manufactured in Germany, France, Spain and the United Kingdom. Since the structural sections manufactured are large in size, traditional transportation methods are inconvenient and unfeasible. This is why they're brought to the Jean-Luc Lagardère plant in Toulouse, France. The mode of transportation is through dedicated roads and sea. However, a few structural parts are shipped using the A300-600ST Beluga transport aircraft. The majority of the components for the Airbus A380 are manufactured by suppliers from across the globe. 
Four of the largest contributors for A380's components by value are Rolls-Royce, Safran, United Technologies and General Electric. During the initial development phases, the Airbus A380s were powered by the Rolls-Royce engine, which was certified during October 2004. The other variant, GP7200, was later certified during December 2005. Considering the mechanism, the modern Airbus airliners are controlled by a fully fly-by-wire flight control system. This is accompanied by an upper fuselage of the aircraft, which is constructed using glare, a mixture of aluminium and fiberglass that is lightweight and more resistant to fatigue. In order to overcome the transportation intricacies for the large A380 structural components, a dedicated route known as the Itinéraire à Grand Gabarit was constructed. This involved constructing a fleet of roll-on, roll-off, RORO barges and ships, port facilities and dedicated roads to accommodate the oversized road convoys. The fuselage sections, both front and rear, are shipped from Hamburg, northern Germany, to Saint-Nazaire, France. The wings are manufactured and loaded on ships in Broughton, northern Wales, and are transported via barges to Mostyn docks for further ship transport. The parts are then transported to Langon, from where they're further transported through the oversized road convoys to the assembly hall in Toulouse. In order to avoid potential damages from direct handling, the larger parts are secured in custom jigs, which are carried on self-powered vehicles. After the entire A380 has been successfully assembled, they're flown to the plant called Airbus Hamburg Finkenwerder, where they're painted and furnished. This production facility and supply chain is capable of producing four A380s per month. Initially, five Airbus A380s were manufactured to go through rigorous testing and demonstration. The first A380, which was registered as FWWOW, was unveiled on January 18, 2005 in Toulouse and flew for the first time on April 27, 2005. It was equipped with Rolls-Royce Trent 900 engines and flew from Toulouse Blanac Airport, including a crew of six. The crew was headed by the chief test pilot Jacques Rosé, who, upon landing, gave the statement that flying the A380 had been like handling a bicycle. On December 1, 2005, the Airbus A380 completed another milestone by achieving its maximum design speed of Mach 0.96 in a shallow dive. This was followed by the aircraft's first ever high-altitude flight in 2006 at Addis Ababa Bowl International Airport. The second high-altitude test was also conducted at the same airport in 2009 as well. On January 10, 2006, the A380 flew to the Jose Maria Cordoba International Airport in Colombia, accomplishing the transatlantic testing. From there, it flew to El Dorado International Airport to conduct an engine operation test at high-altitude airports. Finally, it landed in Iqaluit, Nunavut, in Canada, to conduct the cold weather testing on February 6, 2006. Accomplishing one milestone at a time, the first Airbus A380 appeared to be right on track until February 14, 2006. During the destructive wing strength certification test, the A380's test wings failed at 145% of the limit load, being 5% short of the required level. This was when Airbus announced rigorous modifications to the wing's design, adding around 30 kilograms to reach the required strength. On March 26, 2006, the A380 successfully received approvals from the European Aviation Safety Agency EASA, and United States Federal Aviation Administration FAA, to carry up to 853 passengers. Followed by the successful testing phase for the A380, Airbus also obtained type certificates for the A380-841 and A380-842 model from the FAA and EASA on December 12, 2006 at their French headquarters. As reported by the Airbus officials, the mighty A380 is soon to bring an end to its production life. Considering the failure for Airbus to get new orders, the plans to reduce the A380's fleet size and the aircraft being sent to the scrapyard, it won't be wrong to consider that the end of the aircraft was by no means surprising.
What's your take on Airbus's decision to put a stop to A380's production? Let us know in the comments section below. Click the link on screen now to see more videos just like this one. With that, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.